Hey guys, we're back already. I know you probably weren't expecting me to post so soon since that's not like me, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to read Sink to Swim by Cinebee, which is 30,000 words, which is way shorter than From the Sidelines, which was 400,000 words, so um, I can pump out videos a little bit faster, and then I'll go do a fantasy one after this that's a bit longer. I just can't find the fic right now. I'm searching for it. It's one where Koski is a demon and Izuku's an angel because someone requested for me to do a fantasy fic and I can't remember who it was but I'm still gonna keep my word and do that after this fic but I just gotta find it. So for right now we're doing the shorter one that's really good and of course I've read it before because I will never read y'all something I haven't read because I gotta make sure it's good. And this one's definitely not as um, deep as from the sidelines and doesn't hold as much meaning to me because nothing can beat from the sidelines, but this one is still a great little short fic and actually someone requested it for me. Um, Pi 101 Morris requested it and it's very convenient because I've already read it, so we're gonna do that. Anyways, let's get into it. Chapter 1. Sink. You have got to be fucking kidding me. Kotsky was lying flat on his back, but he wasn't on his bed or his floor or even the common room couch. Whatever he was lying on was hard and cold and foreign. He was also staring up into the wide green eyes of the last person he wanted hovering over him while he was sleeping. Kachan! Kachan, get up! Deku's voice was worried, panicked. That wasn't abnormal. Shitty nerd was anxious about everything, but probably wasn't good combined with the whole waking up in not his bed thing. Kotsky lurched up to sitting, knocking Deku out of the way with a harsh shove. Something heavy dragged at his foot. The hell is this shit? Kotsky hissed, kicking out his left leg. A manacle fit snugly around the base of his shin, just above his ankle and below the cuff of his sweatpants. The long chain running away from it clanked harshly against the metal floor. Kotsky snagged a fistful of the metal links to blow them to pieces, but nothing happened. No sparks, no smoke, no explosion. Snarling, he chucked the chain at Deku, who fell back on his heels to avoid it. My quirk doesn't work either. Deku mumbled. His pajama print t-shirt and shorts were rumpled up and it looked like he had also been ripped right out of his bed. If they had been taken from the UA dorm, that didn't bode well for everyone else at the school, but Kotsky had his own skin to worry about right now. This is bad, Kachan. Shut up. Kotsky leapt to his feet, the chain tugging at him, and he stomped around the room. It was a 10 by 10 room of plain metal 25 foot high walls. He slammed his palm against one, and the resulting sound reverberated around him. Oi! Kotsky yelled. Let me out, you fuckers! Kotsky, I don't think- Piss off, asshole! I don't give a shit what you think! Kotsky seethed, crossing the room to test another wall. The weight around his ankle continued to nag him, and in a fit of rage, he snatched it up and wrenched it hard. With a yelp, Deku fell flat on his back. Koski looked down at him and then down at the chain across his palms. His eyes followed the length of it down to the floor, through a thick metal ring in the center of the room, and over to where it was attached to Deku's right ankle. You have got to be fucking kidding me. Deku propped himself up on one t onto his elbows, staring at the ceiling. Ow! Kachan, look! Koski looked. A rectangular opening punched out of one wall, pressed flush against the ceiling. The only entry or exit, and it was ten feet above a smooth, of smooth metal above his head. If he didn't have his quirk, he had little hope of getting up there, especially while tied to Deku through the floor. There's a key, I think, hanging across from the doorway. Deku was still talking. He pulled himself up to his feet and shuffled to the center of the room, chains rattling. I'm guessing it unlocks this, he ventured, pointing to the metal ring that the chain ran through. It's got a lock with a keyhole on it. Oh, so do these, he shook his manacled leg. Koski moved to see for himself. Thick and sturdy, the hinged ring didn't look like it could be budged, so Koski decided to budge it. 
Gathering up a foot of chain on either side of the ring, he leaned back and pulled, and pulled, his muscles straining and his heart beat too fast as he fought viciously against the lump of metal screwed tight to the floor, bellowing, DIE! at the top of his lungs. A pair of scarred hands joined his on the chain, and Koski snapped his teeth but begrudgingly allowed Deku to take a side and add his strength, not that it made a difference. They pulled and yanked, but the ring stayed firm. It didn't even look mildly affected. Finally, Koski started slamming his shackles against it. The edges bit into his skin, and the shock waves vibrated in his very bones. Still, neither piece of metal yielded. The metal's just too thick. Without our quirks, we can't break it. The key must be the solution. We just have to figure out how to get it. It's obviously too high up for us to reach. Even if we stood on each other's shoulders, it would still be too high. So, what have we missed? I don't see anything else in the room. I think there might- Koski slapped his hand over Deku's mouth. Do you ever stop talking? He hissed through his teeth. Deku blinked once, twice, before narrowing his eyes and stepping back, dislodging Koski's hand. Kachan, we- we're tied to each other. We have to work together, just like the final exam. With a howl of fury, Koski turned to the nearest wall, threw his weight onto his shackled leg, and kicked the wall with his unfettered bare foot. The slap of skin on metal was quickly drowned out by the cacophonous echo of reflected, resonating sound. He drew back and kicked it again, and again, and again. And when the noise finally faded, Deku was glowering at him with his hands over his ears. Are you done? Koski had... Koski's heavy panting filled the room. Immediately, getting to hit something helped quell his seething slightly. No, he spat. These walls are hollow and thin. You want to work together? Put your stupid rabbit legs to work. My... You want to break through the wall? Without our quirks. What about the key? I think we're supposed to... Supposed to? Koski whirled. Supposed to. Will you fucking listen to yourself? Shitty Deku, we just woke up in a dungeon and you want to play some villain's game like it's a goddamn puzzle we can just solve? He gestured sharply at tiny objects hanging high above their heads. Stupid key probably doesn't even work. You want it so bad? Kick the wall under it. Maybe it'll fall down. Because I sure as hell don't know how we're supposed to get it otherwise. He raised his leg to resume his assault, but stopped himself just before he made contact. A new sound had begun steadily building. Kotsky slowly lowered his leg and turned back to the only other person in the room, hoping he was responsible for the rustling noise that was growing louder and louder. But Deku wasn't making it. He twisted back and forth, expression troubled. Do you hear that? It sounds like water. A torrent of it burst out of the opening at the top of the room and began to rapidly cascade down the wall. It hit the floor with a violent splash, quickly spreading out to cover the entire area until they were both standing barefoot in an inch of cold liquid. Fucking great. Oh no, Deku said, barely audible over the rushing den. He looked up at Kotsky. Kachan, shut it. Koski snarled, turning back to the wall to deliver another kick. His wet foot squeaked and slid over the metal wall, lessening the impact. Rapid splashing alerted him to Deku striding over. The chain slithered back him, slithering behind him in the ankle-deep water. That isn't gonna work! Koski gathered up an armful of chain and yanked. Deku went down with a splash and a cry. What the hell is wrong with you? He choked out, fist shaking and tears beating at the corner of his eyes as he struggled to get back to his feet. Great, because what they needed were more waterworks. Bodily throwing the chains down into the water already at their calves, Kotsky slammed the side of his fist into the wall. He grit his teeth. We are about to run out of time until we can't do anything but let the water take us up to your precious key. So if the key is a red hearing, we are fucked. He slammed the wall again. So stop shrieking in my ear. Make yourself useful and kick this goddamn wall with me. If we can't get through, then we'll just float up anyway. With a dizzying dizzying spin that should have been accompanied by green sparks, Deku landed a devastating kick to the wall. 
The reverberations were deafening, and Kotsky had to flinch away from it. But the wall held. It wasn't even dented. This won't work, Deku yelled. His eyes were glittering green wildfire when they turned to Kotsky. If the wall breaks, we're still chained to the middle of the floor, and we can't just float up, Kotchan. Kotchan, the chain isn't even long enough. Kotsky looked down. The chain curled around them under almost three feet of water. Then he looked up again, then back down. Well, Deku wasn't exactly right. The chain was just long enough to reach the key for one of them. Fucking hell, he growled. The water steadily rose as they stood there in silence. Deku began to shiver. Kotchan, he said softly. He placed a hand on Kotsky's elbow, now underwater. Please strategize with me. Kotsky shook him off, sloshing the water, a muttered die under his breath. Kotsky's la- er, De- Deku's laugh rang out, sudden and manic. I'm, I'm going to, he splashed Kotsky with a violent wave like they were kids at the pool messing around. Kotsky let the water roll down him, and in a few minutes it wouldn't make a difference. We were literally going to die, Kotchan, inhaling sharply through his teeth. Kotsky resisted the urge to splash back. We're not going to die, idiot. We will just alternate breathing until one of us reaches the top. There. Happy strategy. Oh, sure, because we're really in sync right now. We won't be able to talk to each other once that starts. We need a system. The water lapped at their shoulders. They'd be treading it momentarily. The ceiling lights were far overhead, but the refractions in the water still lit up underside of Deku's face in wobbly patterns of intense brightness. Panic and desperation reflected alongside them in shimmering eyes. Please... Koski swallowed. It's not that he w- couldn't work with Deku if he forced to, but he sure was tired of it being the only time he did. The chain. We can tug on it. When we need to switch. Half of Deku's mouth rose in a smile, and relief was evident in his eyes. Okay, let's test it while we can still speak. They were treading water now, with the chain still slack below their pedaling feet. They had probably a few minutes before they'd have to start alternating when the water was about halfway up the wall. Deku reached below and fished around for the chain. Did you feel that? Koski shook his head. There was still too much slack. It would need a larger... Suddenly he was ripped under the surface. He pushed back up, spluttering. Asshole! Koski kicked his leg up in retaliation and was rewarded with dunking Deku in return. When the other boy surfaced, his hair was flat and bedraggled and hilarious. Huh, you look like a lump of seaweed, Koski sneered. Kachan, Deku protested, but he was laughing, like they didn't have their lives on the line. But the mirth was short-lived. It's going to get harder the closer we get to the top. We'll need to hold our breaths longer, and the person underwater won't know when the other reaches the surface. Multiple tugs, then. Tug when you get to the top so the person below won't get too far down. Tug at the bottom when you need to switch. Tug again at the top to confirm. And then we both start moving. Whoever gets to the key first unlocks their shackles before they signal. Then the other, when we're both at the top. Got it? And the smile was back this time bright and full with stars in his eyes. Got it. I trust you, Kachan. Kachan's amazing after all. Tell me when we get out of this. We're almost out of time. Let's test it for real. I'll go down and signal first. At Deku's nod, Kautsky drew in a breath and slipped underwater. Liquid filled his ears and clouded his vision. The sudden quiet was disconcerting. It was only going to get worse. He swam down nearly to the floor and gathered the chain until he could feel the tension. He tugged. The cold metal under his fingers was indistinguishable from the cold water pressing in all around. After a beat, he felt the chain jerk back in his hands. Kotsky passed Deku, swimming down on the way back up to the surface. So far, so good. Kotsky tugged on the chain to indicate that he had hit air. Deku's head popped up shortly after the return signal, spraying water droplets that glinted like diamonds. Good? Good, Deku confirmed, panting. He shook his hair and water out of his eyes pointlessly. I think we're almost at the halfway mark, Kosky grunted. At this point, he just wanted to start so they could get it over with. Um, look, Kachan, Deku began, drifting close enough that Kosky could count his freckles. This isn't going... This is going to sound weird, but I need you to, uh, eat a piece of my hair. There were a lot of things Kalski had expected the nerd to say to him in their last moments before their do-or-die trial really began. 
Good luck. You can do it. I believe in you. Katran is amazing. I love you. That kind of thing. This was not one of them. Huh? No, what the actual fuck, Deku? They stopped rising with the water. The chain held taut evenly between them on either side of the hook, keeping it, and them anchored to the floor. You just have to trust me. All Might will explain, but j just in case I don't make it and you do... Only their faces were out of the water. Like hell you're dying without me, shitty nerd, Kotsky spat. Shut up! Deku's teeth chattered and his voice spiked with panic as he held on out a single hair he had plucked from his scalp. Please, please, Kachan, I need to... Bakoski didn't find out what Deku needed. With a gurgle, the water covered him, the few inches of height or chain giving Koski the advantage of not submerging first. The fist with the offended follicle poked out of the water, instantly stretch insistently stretching forward. Koski backstroked away from it, and the movement yanked Deku fully under the water. After scowling down at the distorted image of Deku glaring back at him for a tense minute, a sharp tug on his ankle signaled the first swap. It had begun. It started easy. The tug system seemed like overkill at first, as they seesawed back and forth just a few inches. Even as the water, water rose higher, how far they needed to go down to let each other breathe was still small, and switching was manable, manageable until it wasn't. Koski's muscles ached and his lungs burned. Swimming with a shackle and chain attached to his ankle was slow and painful. If they didn't move together at the same speed, the chain made it that much more difficult as they dragged each other up and down. Every time he dove under to take his turn, Koski had to hold his breath a little longer. By the time he got the signal that Deku had surfaced, he had already wanted to tug back to switch. He resisted. He needed to let Deku catch his breath. Well, he resisted at first, anyway. It quickly got to the point where their turns at the top were extremely brief, just a few lungfuls of air before the weight on his ankle beckoned him back into the depths. They passed each other in blurry silence. It's what Koski had wanted since he woke up in the cold steel box, for Deku to shut off his never-ending stream of babbling. Now that they were completely isolated in this eerie underwater fight for their lives, he wasn't exactly sure if it was better. His vision was starting to black out at the edges when he surfaced. Koski strained his arm up, 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 until he felt the pull on his foot and slapped the water in frustration. The key was still out of his reach, but they knew they were swimming almost all the way to the floor with hardly any slack left in the chain to draw from. They were close. Either Deku would get it in his next turn, or Koski would. Deku didn't get it in his next turn. Bursting out of the water, Koski lunged for the key. His cold, shriveled fingers grasped and, fun grasped and fumbled, and he couldn't even curse, though his chattering teeth at e each miss swipe. Come on, come on. Deku would be tugging him back any second, and he needed, he needed to get the key on his turn. He barely made it to the surface this time. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, the key ring slipped off the hook. A hysterical laugh bubbled out of him as he held the key aloft. Victory. As, key, as Kotsky brought it down to unlock his shackle, a small card attached to the key ring glinted in the reflecting lights. His shaking hand could barely hold still enough to read the tiny print on it will only work once. If Kotsky freed himself, he could get out of the water right now. Deku would be able to surface, but unlock the manacle wouldn't fit through the ring. He'd be stuck treading water until his body gave out from exhaustion and he drowned. Who did these fuckers take him for? Kotsky clenched his jaw, waiting for the return signal. But it didn't come. He tugged on the chain. Nothing. Fuck, Kotsky swore before diving down below with the key in his teeth. With his heart which had already begun straining and pumping madly, trying to supply his body with what little oxygen he gave it, hammered in his ears as he descended. Deku wasn't coming up. Deku wasn't coming up. Through the hazy water, Koski saw him, floating listlessly at the bottom, his graying hair fanned out all around his head. This had better fucking work. If it didn't, Koski wouldn't be able to pull Deku to the surface. He would drown. He was already drowning. There wasn't time to think. Koski's fingers were numb and as and slow as they fished out the key from his mouth and maneuvered it to the lock. The high ceiling lights and his blurred vision offered him to only just enough visibility to get it on the first try. He felt the mechanism unlatch as the key snapped off, and the sound reverberated in his bones instead of his ears and relief surged through him along with it. 
No one can tell if you start crying underwater. With one bolt undone, the ring easily opened, and Koski pulled the chi- chain free from its clutches. He slammed the ring back shut so it could catch the chain on their way up. Something like that would be fatal. He was covered in water, but his lungs were on fire, and as his head was pounding and muscles were screaming, but like hell he was going to let them drown now when they have won. Koski grabbed the chain by Deku's ankle, towing him along upside down as he raced to the surface. It should have been slower with two people and limited use of his right arm, but Koski's adrenaline surge had shoot had him shooting through the water like a dolphin on speed despite the added weight. The darkness at the edges closed in. Almost. Almost. Bubbles erupted out of Kotsky's mouth. Nearly th- nearly there. His lungs spasmed inside his rib cage, desperate to inhale. Die! With a final, brutal push, Kotsky broke free of the icy death clawing at him, spraying droplets and spitting as he grasped gasp raggedly, sucking in air greedily. He pulled Deku's head out of the water after him, but no gasp, no sharp intake of air or sputter, no sunshine smile or childhood nickname. The water had stopped flowing and was blessedly level with the entryway by the time Kotsky and Deku surfaced for the final time. Every fiber of Kotsky's being shrieked in protest as he heaved Deku out of the water and into the passage with a wet thump. He dragged his waterlogged self up after him, the chain one last additional hurdle, still trying to keep him weighed down in the watery coffin. Koski crawled over Deku's unconscious body. His face was pale, unnaturally so, for far paler than it should have been. No rosy blush at being too close, no deep red flush from embarrassment of almost dying. Come on, shitty nerd, Koski bit out weakly. He himself was trembling, gasping. He probably had hypothermia. Don't die on me yet. Chancing a glance down the hallway for any immediate threats, just as a long way, just a long passageway and a door, Kotsky let his training kick in and began to administer CPR. Not breathing, no pulse. Don't think, don't think, just do. Chest compressions. Check breathing. Not breathing. No pulse. Was this it? Fuck Deku. Kotsky choked out. This wasn't how this was supposed to go. This wasn't how he was supposed to win. With shaking fingers, Kotsky tilted Deku's head back and lifted his chin, pinched his nose shut, gave him two breaths, followed by chest compressions. A real shitty first kiss. Two breaths, chest compressions. His skin was as cold as ice, not breathing, not living. No more Deku meant no more annoying kid trailing at his heels, always sitting behind him in class, asking stupid questions, fighting side by side, nonstop muttering nonsense. Fucking say something, you piece of shit! Koski roared, and Deku finally spluttered, coughing violently before he rolled over and retched, spewing more water over the wet metal floor. Koski fell back on his ass, shaking, his heartbeat still slamming against his skull, and adrenaline dragging a sharp current of electricity through his skin. Fuck, he breathed. The stillness and absence of rushing water was deafening, only broken by chattering teeth and wet coughing. The tank of water next to them gently lapped at the entryway, as if it hadn't been trying to drown them just moments before. <sighs> Deku finally rasped, unfocused eyes, rolled around blearily before settling and dialing in on Kotsky. Save me, he whispered hoarsely, followed by a wobbling grin. Yeah, yeah, Kotsky grumbled. Don't get used to it. Did you not signal on purpose? When Deku spoke, his voice was quiet and ragged. Knew I wouldn't make another round. Knew you could get it. Had to give you time. Huffing, Kotsky began reeling in the chain. They'd have to move with it. Idiot, you could have died. Knew I wouldn't. Knew you'd save me. Gosh, that's amazing. Kotsky felt his cheeks warm, so foreign on his freezing cold face. He glanced down the hallway at the door. Was this it? Was it over? Kotsky had a hard time believing they were out of the woods yet. Would they even be able to face what was next? They were both half dead, Kotsky only faring marginally better by the grace that he hadn't drowned. Deku pathetically tried to wrap his arms around the shivering sides, as if he had any hope of ecking warmth from his frigid limbs. I'm cold, Kotsky, he croaked. A shudder racked Kotsky's frame. He was cold, too. He just wanted to lie down and go to sleep forever, sinking into that fuzzy cocoon that offered his terrifying mind an aching body, 
the blissful relief he so deserved. Have they survived that drowning nightmare only to die in this dark hallway? Fuck that. Get up, Kosky growled. A breathy whine was all he received in response. Up. Now. I can't carry your carcass for you, shithead. Kosky lurched up to standing, falling heavily against the wall as his vision blacked out at the apex. Not a great start. Deku managed to get himself onto his hands and knees, but there he stopped. Kosky should have laughed. Here was this perpetual pain in his ass, prostrated before him, unable to even lift his stupid head, but now all Kotsky actually wanted to do was scoop the idiot, idiot up and get him into a hospital bed, shortly before falling into one of his own. Kotsky very much doubted there were any beds on the other side of that door. If you have to crawl, crawl, Kotsky grit out, and he took a shaky step forward. That door isn't going to help or hurt us. But we die here either way, so fucking move. And so they moved. They must have been, they must have made a sorry sight as they inched towards the door, the chains rattling behind them as they staggered, stuttered, and crawled. They left a trail of damp in their wake from their soaking wet clothes and falling tears. Barely suppressed sobs echoed around them, though the truth of who they belonged to would stay in that hallway forever.